morning class. Today we're going to talk about TGF beta signalling. Julia, what does TGF beta stand for? Well, it stands for transforming growth factor beta. But what does it do? Well, it's involved in cell growth, cell differentiation and cell development. Oh. So a multiple role. How exciting. Yes. Today we're going to go over the signal pathway of TGF beta. Once 
once again, the smart phosphorylated smart complex binds to your smart binding element, S, B, E. This, once again, interacts with your transcription factor, but this time, it's your co-repressor that comes along. And this is known as histone deacetylase, also known as HDAC. This turns off gene expression. <laughs> but how? <laughs> well, this time we're going the other way. So, instead of having the loose free structure where you're able to access bits of the DNA, it goes back to being a more compact structure as the N-terminal tails are no longer acetylated. Therefore, you can't transcribe the genes anymore and they're switched off. Oh! But are these always bound to the DNA? No, Jasmine. Once they're finished, they dephosphorylate, and when they dephosphorylate, they leave the nucleus. However, they can be activated again by the receptors and be phosphorylated in the cytoplasm. So basically, they shuttle between the cytoplasm and the nucleus. This shuttling effect and turning the genes off and on has different effects in different cells. <laughs> To summarise the TGF beta signaling pathway, the ligand binds to type 2 serum theory kinase receptor. These receptors then homodimerize and phosphorylate SMAD. This then comes together with co SMAD to oligomerize and they go into the nucleus. In the nucleus, they turn on or turn off genes. And this changes the transcription profile of the cell, leading to different cellular effects. I hope you've enjoyed your lesson on TGF-beta signalling. Thanks, Thanks for watching! watching.